Hello, this is Pastor Schuyler from Berean Baptist Church of Santan Valley. You can learn more about us on our website. All the information will be in the video description below. As a lot of our church family knows, I'm recovering from a bad case of pneumonia, and Pastor Gerald and others are taking up the main teaching and preaching ministries, praise God, for member ministers. And I thought it would be good for me to spend some time on our YouTube channel sharing regular thoughts from the Word of God. At Berean, our focus is to make disciples of Jesus by teaching people to know him and follow him through his word. And so I thought a great place to start doing that here on the YouTube channel would be short, practical, applicable studies in the Gospel of Mark. We're going to start going through the Gospel of Mark just a little bit at a time, maybe a couple verses at a time in these videos. They're not going to be long videos. We're not going to get into every deep dive and every corner of theology. We'll save that for another time. There is a place for that, but not here. Each of these videos on Mark is just going to be a few minutes long, and my goal is to give you something that is consistently applicable and straightforward, which is very appropriate for Mark's style. So, okay. So Mark 1.1, 1, 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark's language is very direct, he doesn't give a long prologue. He doesn't give a long introduction. If you compare this to John with its rich theology or Luke with its historiography, Mark is very straightforward in the beginning or the beginning. And this language should make us think of the beginning of all things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We'll see that this gospel is touchingly human. Mark's gospel is perhaps the most human of the gospels. Jesus has depicted in the most powerfully human um, ways, almost, well, very much as a servant even. But the gospel, Mark's good news, is also rooted in eternal things. In fact, we call this the gospel of Mark, and I'm going to call it the gospel of Mark a lot. Really, this is not the gospel of Mark. Look at what Mark calls it. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The gospel is a good news. So this is Mark saying, this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. So we should be thinking when we think, what's good news, especially in the ancient world? What is, what is this good news that Mark is about to spend uh, several chapters, what, 16 chapters telling us? We should be thinking about things like the report of a battle being won. You, lo you live in the ancient world. You know your country's at war. You don't know all the details. You can't watch CNN at night. And so when a battle is actually won, a messenger comes through and shouts the good news. The battle has been won. We've won. The war is over. We should be thinking about a new king bringing peace to a country. We should be thinking about the salvation of a people from a great disaster. That's what this is. This is the good news of something. How desperately do we need good news in these days? And so what is this good news of? This is the good news of Jesus Christ. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. The name Jesus is in continuity with the Old Testament. It's a version of the name Joshua. And once again, we should be thinking about a victorious king, Joshua, during the wars. The name basically means God saves. And the name Christ is a reference to a chosen or an anointed king. So this is the story, the true story that Mark is going to tell us, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is also the Son of God. In verse 1, truly the point of the gospel, the point of this good news, Mark, Mark is very blunt, very straightforward. He loves to be direct. And here he just lays it out. His whole real thing is all in the first verse. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So the true point of this gospel, everything that Mark is going to tell us, is that Jesus is the Son of God. When we think of the Son of God, we should think of a, a great prince who is personally distinct from the Father, his king, but legally and positionally like the king. Jesus is only, <clears throat> Jesus, is, well, we'll see more later about this, but I want you to notice something. This is the only genealogy that we get of Jesus in the gospel of Mark. Matthew has an extremely Jewish genealogy. Matthew's very interested in Jewish things. Luke has a very, uh, a very cosmopolitan, a very Roman genealogy that takes Jesus back to the very foundations of humanity. 
John has his own thing that's very deep and theological. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But here, the only genealogy we get for Jesus in Government Mark's Gospel is just this blunt statement. He's the Son of God. So what does this mean? This powerful little verse, what does this mean? Well, first of all, see that Mark gives us no earthly father for Jesus, no mother for Jesus, no upbringing, no Christmas story. Jesus simply is in Mark. In the same way, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God simply is, in Mark's gospel, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He simply is. So this lack of genealogy will matter because Jesus, the Son of God, comes like the ancient priest Melchizedek. I give you a reference there, Hebrews 7.3. Melchizedek was without father, without mother, without descendant, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. He just sort of appears and does this amazing priestly stuff in the Old Testament, and then he's gone. And nobody knows where he came from. Nobody knows where he went. Some people think that Melchizedek is a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus. And the point, though, is that Jesus is without beginning, without end. Like Melchizedek, whoever Melchizedek was, he is rooted in eternity. Jesus is rooted in eternity in the beginning. And he walks into our brief world laden with this mighty purpose. He is the Son of God. And there is good news to be told about his coming, as we will see going through this. But also, if Jesus is exalted, if he is eternal, rooted and grounded in eternity, he's also lowly. And that's the other thing that we see in this brief passage in Mark. Important people have genealogies, especially in the ancient world. If you want to know why you should listen to somebody, you, should, you need to know who they are and where they came from, what kind of person they are. Mark doesn't give us a genealogy for Jesus. Jesus comes on the scene as this mysterious, ancient, eternal servant, somebody without a history at least a history as far as we know yet. The prophet Isaiah told us of Jesus coming that he has no form or comeliness. In other words, he doesn't, he's not very impressive. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. We don't, we don't know who this guy is. We don't, we don't care about him. He's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our face with him, from him, excuse me. He was despised and we esteemed him not. He was taken from prison and judgment, but who shall declare his generation? Do you see that genealogy or that eternal, eternal thing as well? And so here we have a dual presentation of Jesus in this, in this brief passage in Mark. We have Jesus as sort of grounded in eternity, just sort of comes out of nowhere, the son of God. But also without a genealogy, without a background, Jesus does have a background, but Mark intentionally doesn't give us that background because Mark is going to want us to see Jesus as both exalted and lowly, as both king and a servant. So what does this mean for us? Simply this, grasp and apply the truth that Jesus is the height of divinity, the Son of God, and also the depth of humanity, no background to speak of. He is fit to rule your life and he is tender, he is lowly, he is able to care for you. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I can't tell you how much I look forward to going through the gospel of Mark together. Like I said, we're just going to do little bits at a time, several days a week. I'm going to work to be really consistent at this. But in the meantime, I hope this has been a blessing to you, and I want to encourage you to read ahead. If you could read a chapter of the gospel of Mark every day, you'd be doing really good. I look forward to seeing folks when God allows. I look forward to getting back. But until then, I'm Pastor Schuyler with Berean Baptist Church, and God bless.